uh, let me uh, introduce a little bit about today's lecture that will be presented by Dr. Juan Silva. Uh, Dr. Uh, Juan Silva is from Venezuela. Uh, he completed his medical school studies from University of Carabobo, Venezuela. He specialized occupational medicine at the University Hospital of Valencia, Spain and later on completed his residency in anesthesia and resuscitation at the University of Carabobo in Venezuela. Uh, after the completion, he continued to work there as a teaching consultant anesthesiologist. He joined us here in Cape in 2018 as a consultant anesthesiologist and continues till today. Dr. Silva is not only providing an excellent service to the patients, but he has also been actively involved in the resident's teaching and department CME activities. Dr. Silva is also currently part of an ongoing research project in anesthesia, and he is expected soon to come up with new research projects in near future. Uh, we all know that fast tracking of patients' care is currently a trend worldwide and the purpose is to reduce the hospital stay duration and the cost of patients in various types of surgeries. Dr. Juan Silva is going to talk about fast track approach to eye surgeries at KKH. And I hope you all will find the talk interesting and very relevant to our practice. So I will not take any more time. I would like to invite him to please begin his uh, talk today. Thank you very much, Dr. Sahur. Hi, everyone. Let me share the screen. Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Juan Carlos Silva. I'm an anesthesia consultant. And it's an honor for me to be able to do this lecture today because today we're going to talk about concepts and values that represent our hospital philosophy, such a high standards in quality, in safety and satisfaction of our patients and where the importance of our teamwork is highlighted in order to provide the best possible healthcare service. So today I will talk about fast track. All right, the crisis forced you to do more with less. Some of the biggest projects have arisen in the greatest difficulties. As you know, even before the arrival of COVID-19 in our life, the crisis in the health sector was already evident. We had also a growing pressure generated by the increased cost of the public health care. The situation seek us to find new strategies, to be able to provide the same quality, the same safety, and at the same time, try to be more efficient with our limited resources. It's for this reason that a system called fast track surgery has been introduced in the last 30 years, which has generated great interest in projects all around the world. So today we have enough scientific evidence and proven quality and safety assessment and a real possibility of reducing healthcare costs related to hospital stay, surgical time, and post-operative recovery time. To understand the evolution of the concept of fast track surgery, we need to understand that this term arrived in 1990, where this doctor here, Henry Killett, a Danish doctor described different aspects of the perioperative care and how these aspects influence the recovery process and the final outcome of his own patients undergoing laparoscopic colon surgery. So at this time, I start the transition from a surgeon to a perioperative medicine professor. And all this start with a simple question. Why is this patient still in my hospital? Since that time, Dr. Killett has dedicated himself to find answers for that question. But under the philosophy of treating pathology with a minimal alteration of physiology. 
in order to carry out his plan, he decided to find which aspects of the perioperative process he can influence. So he divided in pre-op, op, and post-operative care, and he started to ask himself, what can I do to improve the final prognosis of my patient and reduce their stay in my hospital? So here you can see that after 10 years of research, he concluded that the reduction of the response to surgical stress, a rapid mobilization, and an adequate pre- and post-operative nutrition allowed early mobilization and medical discharge from 10 to only three days. In these slides, you can see all the components of a striped surgery care. He started in the preparative, where information and counseling, optimization of organ function, even smoking and alcohol abstinence, and uh, no eight hour fasting, but only two with carbohydrate loading improve the outcome. Inside the intraoperative care, he optimized the fluids. He has a lot of work re re regarding maintenance of normothermia, all the benefits of regional anesthesia instead of general anesthesia, the use of short acting opioids, and in the time it requires antibiotic prophylaxis and thromboprophylaxis. And now in the postoperative, he talked about multimodal opioid usage, the advantage of preventing nausea and vomiting, uh, early mobilization, and have a very clear discharge criteria. In view of this promising result, other European countries became interested in his studies and create uh, the first multimodal rehabilitation program called the ERAS Group. ERAS was created in 2001 and is the acronym of Enhanced Recovery After Surgery. This group has been generating protocols that combines preoperative, intraoperative, and postoperative strategies based on scientific evidence to improve the recovery functionality and the postoperative uh, surgical metabolic stress, promoting an early recovery that in the long run reduce hospital state and cost. Nowadays, when we speak of fast track surgery or ERAS protocol, we are talking about a multimodal approach to patient care using a combination of several evidence-based uh, interventions to expedite recovery after surgery. It's important to understand that it's not only regarding to reduce times, okay? It's about to find the correct protocol, the correct methodology to use in a better way the resources we have. So I'm not gonna talk about all the aspects of the errors. I'm just gonna make a small summarize of the most important. Here you can see they create a huge multi-center trial, sorry, where they found that they need to create a better fluid management to improve the outcome. So they found that if they create this term called goal direct fluid management, they can reduce the surgical morbidity. They found that it's not only pick the right type of fluid, it's just to uh, calculate the right dose of this fluid according of the type of surgery it's, they are going to perform. Sorry. This is an other very important study called uh, Evidence-Based Surgical Care and the Evolution of the Fast Track Surgery. So after almost 10 years collecting evidence, they found that multi Model, multi model evidence based care within the fast track methodology significantly enhance postoperative recovery and reduce morbidity and should therefore be more wide adopted. He also talked 
at this time in 2008 about how the introduction of minimal invasive surgery reduced pharmacological, uh, pharmacological stress and how the use of effective multimodal non-opiate analgesia improved the outcome of their patients. This is a very important study because in the United States, they found that when they introduce this after surgery and fast track pathway in the healthcare, they reduce all these infections associated in healthcare. So they found that our results suggest that fast track surgery protocols are a powerful tools to prevent health associated infections. So even they don't know how it's exactly it works, it provides that consider this transdisciplinary program to reduce perioperative infections. This article, they talk about the evidence regarding compare regional anesthesia and the multidisciplinary fast track surgical pathway. So they found that the use of local anesthesia instead of general anesthesia produce an early discharge and can achieve reduce the hospital stay by almost 40%. Also under local anesthesia, they improve early ambulation with an earlier return to work and productivity of the patient. They also found that reduced post-operative morbidity and complications. This uh, essay of 2014, Fast Track Surgery to Work Comprehensive Perioperative Care, they showed that improved institutional efficiency through reduction in patient turnover times, which allows a larger number of patients to be served with the available structure. They also proved that the application of fast track surgery make cost reductions ranging from 15 to 35% and improve outcome and no rise complication when compared with traditional surgical care. In the ERAS, they prove after a 10 year study that minimal invasive surgery reduced the inflammatory response and patient stress, it produced an adequate postoperative analgesia allowing early mobilization and early discharge and also reduced postoperative nausea and vomiting, facilitating early recovery of the patient. As you see, numerous clinical trials have shown that the application of these protocols produce excellent results. But now that we have a little more knowledge about fast track surgery, it's time to make a few questions. So you, do you think it's possible to apply and improve the fast track surgery at Kekesh? Well, personally, I think we can do it. So far, we're doing a great job, but if we really want, we can improve. Right now, we don't have too many evidence regarding protocols in eye surgery, because since all of the researchers are focused in major surgeries, you know, cardiac surgeries, brain surgeries, uh, uh, orthopedic surgeries, because the costs are huge, but like no one has dedicated time to make a very good uh, evidence-based protocol for eye surgery. But analyzing the information obtain and applying some improvement it's possible to develop. For example, we can make the short stay unit a more dynamic process. We can generate a better bed turnover and make the experience much more satisfactory without diminishing safety, quality, and final result. You know, fast track surgery do not mean a rigid one size fits all protocol. Each protocol has to be very carefully designed to try and comply, but always with the possibility of being flexible and individualized in the case that requires. <clears throat> because this next slide, I think it's a very important one because here we can resume the importance of fast track surgery. It 
because the goal of applying this protocol is not to reduce the cost of surgery, is not even reduce the time of surgery, is to make an efficient methodology feasible that when applied to the entire perioperative process, we will improve the use of our resources, leading to a reduction in cost without compromising the quality of healthcare that we provide in our hospital. So, what are the steps to follow for its implementation? Well, as you see, the first thing we need is identify which are the implementations we wanna make. After that, we will make a very uh, deep research about the scientific evidence we have. And after that, we create a plan. We implement it, we evaluate it, and after that, we will examine and see how it's working. For do this job, we need a good team. And in Kikesh, I know we have it, because as you see, together, everyone achieved more. And the other important part of this implementation, it's a start, step by step, no rush. So the first that many uh, protocols said is we need to start for creating a multidisciplinary team, okay? As you know, every protocol needs a leader. In this, they are in contact with the patient in the whole perioperative process, you know, pre-op, intra-op, and post-op. And they are the ones that will assign the role to every part of the group. So we can together create policies that be center in the patient care. We will do a dynamic policies and we will review periodically. And here I found, not because I'm an anesthesia consultant, but a lot of the studies, they advise that the anesthesia is like the key. Here you see in this article that the anesthesiologists as perioperative physicians play a key role in fast track surgery through their choice of preoperative medication, the anesthetic method, the technique they use, the use of prophylactic drugs to minimize, minimize sorry, side effects like pain, nausea, vomiting, dizziness, as well the administration of adjunctive drugs to maintain major organ system function during and after surgery. In conclusion, the decision of the anesthesiologist is a key perioperative physician are critical importance to the surgical care team in developing successful fast track surgery program. Now, to create a correct formulation of policies, there are a few steps we need to achieve. The first one is identify and assemble all the specialist staff members and support this staff involved in patient care. We will review the available literature on perioperative care to identify those interventions that may be useful before, during, and after surgery. And now that we have these two things established, we will go for the most important decision, which surgical intervention and what type of patient I wish to apply the new protocol and policies. This is an example of application of fast track surgery in cataract surgery. And for example, we can choose patients ASA one and two, we will individualize the pre-anesthesia evaluation. This patient will arrive at our hospital without pre-medication with no eight hours or six hour fasting, just only two hours with a carbohydrate drink. We will do it under topical anesthesia or local anesthesia and on patients who live in the city of Riyadh of Serenity. And we need to shoot that we are going to start with uncomplicated cataract surgery because we can, you know, like uh, know the time that we can perform this surgery. So what would be the goals 
we, that we can achieve with this fast track protocol. So you need to create your own goals and you can provide from the moment they enter to the hospital until the moment they are discharged. I take this information from two studies that uh, one was in Australia and the other one was made in Canada and they have this system. This system is applied in private sector more than public sector. And we can find another goal like being able to perform an average of 14 surgeries in nine hours. This is feasible. You know, if you check the times in other hospital, these times are not out of context. And I know if we try, we can do it. And normally they do this protocol with a team conformed by three nurses, one surgeon with one resident or fellow, one anesthesiologist specialist, and one consultant. I know that a lot of you are thinking right now, well, you know, everything sounds real good, this, but how can we implement this if we are a university hospital where we have a high standard and high level of training and teaching residents and fellows? Well, my friend, it is possible because the idea is to show you that we can improve the utilization of our resources. In this study, named Improved Utilization of Operating Room Time for Training Cataract Surgery in a Public Hospital Setting, it's very interesting. See, the purpose was to examine the effect of group goals and group performance theories on operation room efficiency in residents perform cataract surgery. This was placed in San Francisco, California, and the method they, they study assess four specific segments of operation room utilization, identified as room to incision time, incision close time, close to exit time, and room to turnover time. The time segments were measured for resident performed cataract cases before the proposed intervention. Then each group goals were set for ideal times of each utilization segment. Behaviors of the surgery, the anesthesia, nursing, pharmacy, and housekeeping teams that would improve group performance were identified. And the result, they found that the time segments were measured for 134 residents. After intervention, the HC 136 residents performed cataract cases. Before the intervention, the mean overall case time was 55 minutes, allowing do only 10 cases in a 10 hour day work. After the intervention, the mean overall case time was only 46 minutes, allowing to increase to 13 cases in 10 hours day. It means like a simple goal implementation can improve your efficiency in almost 30%. In conclusion, Operating room utilization for resident performed cataract surgery was enhanced by setting group goals, a multidisciplinary effort to enhance group performance through behavior modification can be implemented immediately and improve efficiency without compromising patient safety or resident teaching. Now, you know, it sounds really good I've been talking about all the benefits and all the evidence we have regarding fast track surgery, but if it's that good, why is not worldwide applied? Well, you know that change routines are always difficult. There is a resistance to the change in people that creates barriers that hinder its correct implementation. In fact, there are many studies that try to find why this technique cannot be achieved everywhere. For example, in this article, in this paper, they found that implementation of fast track preparative care programs, what are the difficulties? In conclusions, they found that the first and greatest barrier is the lack of awareness regarding the idea of fast track surgery. Even surgeons and anesthesiologists 
who are aware of these concepts often find it difficult to accept all the components of the fast track program because they have conflicts with their personal belief and traditional teaching. In this paper, implementation of fast track perioperative care program, they also found that setting up multidisciplinary team and training of hospital staff to comply a new protocol, it's viewed as a difficult task with the majority of the staff. It is also difficult to incentivize care in the public sector. And here for the implementation of fast track, it's very important to educate patients. And as you know, educate patients requires time, patience, and money. But it's not only related with the application of, of the fast track survey. It's, there are also other problems related to the acceptance of these protocols by patients. In this article, fast track surgery in real life and how patient factors influence outcomes and compliance with enhanced recovery clinical pathway, they found that normally patients associate long stay with better results. The fact of being operated and then only have a few days off and a prompt reintegration to work sometimes is not well valued. Other patients and relative of elderly patients are apprehensive about early discharge for fear of complications at home. And this is also difficult to implement fast track surgery when patients come from distant places because then they will have problems for an adequate follow up. Sorry. Now, there's not all bad about the difficulties and the barriers regarding uh, application of fast track surgery. In fact, the possibility, possibility of applying fast track surgery has also been studied and has been proved for this, that the implementation is not easy. Okay, but you know, if you can apply and complete 50% of your plan goals, you will have a very positive result. There are studies in this one, they, they said that in German, in a large multicentric study of older patients with comorbid conditions, these patients sounds like our patients, they complain 75% of the goals and they can, and they reduct 45% in hospital state with no increase in complication, and they reduce costs in almost 25%. So as conclusion, now that we understand what is fast track surgery, how can we implement it, and what are the difficulties, the next question to answer ourselves is, uh, we can do fast track surgery here in Kikesh, and my answer now, it's more strong. Yes, we can. And we can not because Kikesh is number one. It's because we have sufficient evidence in the literature to support that the adoption of fast track surgery will give a very positive result to our institution. Because we know that with, uh, with the great team we have and with all this multidisciplinary approach, we can do whatever we want and improve all the benefits of fast track surgery in our hospital. Also, I know we have the right people to make the correct formulation of a written protocol that includes the use of all this evidence-based practice and make it a very important step in the future of our hospital. Also, the application of this type of measures will help, will create benefits in the Saudi healthcare system, reducing almost 20 or 25% of the actual cost. And for all the Kekesh hospital, I think that the idea of removing the ocular pathologies of our patients with the less possible stress and make the visit of our center considered as a satisfactory experience 
is a goal worth trying. I don't want to end my presentation without sharing with you this sentence by one guy I admire a lot. It's Socrates, one of our greatest philosophers, where he pushed us to change. And he said, the secret of change is to focus all of your energy, not on fighting the old, but on building the new. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Silva. Uh, it was a very uh, interesting uh, talk. And um, I personally believe in a past tracking because I work in some other places and it was, uh, it, uh, uh, you know, it is, a, it is beneficial. Uh, it is not only for the cost, but you mentioned all the other reasons like uh, reducing the infection, uh, early mobilization, bringing the patient back to his uh, normal physiological status uh, uh, in a faster way. Uh, but uh, I would like to invite all the attendees if they have any question. So kindly please uh, ask your question. Thank you very much, Doctor. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Any question from the audience? Thank you very much, Dr. Silva. This is Dr. Abdullah from Retina. Hi, Dr. Abdullah. How are you? Fine, thank you. Thank you for this nice presentation. My question, do, do you think that um, um, uh, based on a, a previous study regarding just the act of observation, I mean, just putting the goal itself will improve the, will improve the, um, uh, uh, you know, the effectiveness and the productivity of the team. Yes, yes. You know, I think this is an important step in, in improve our efficiency because, you know, I think for start, we need to be very objective. You know, we need to, to, to plan, create a feasible goals and we should start step by step. For example, if we increase I don't know, like the, the resources trying to reduce the time from the SSU to inside the OR, so we can save 15, 20 minutes. And once you start to create this implementation, it will start to work like automatically. And you know, it will produce a better sensation for the staff that is working, but for the patient, you know, because right now, you know, historically, the, the result of the surgery, you will measure how good was just at the end of the surgery. But right now, there's a pressure because patient satisfaction is very important if you want to consider a high quality standard center for, uh, for safety, for quality. So we need to, to make attention in all the process in the perioperative uh, stage that we can improve the feeling of the patient. You know, he will arrive, someone will talk to him. We will explain everything very clear. He will go direct almost from the door to inside the room. He finished the surgery. This sounds very good, but you know, like for example, for retina, it's quite difficult because sometimes your cases needs longer surgery. So we need to find which are the, the, the goals we need to achieve with retina patients. And as I told you, this is, we have, you know, like a, a full way to, to improve because there are not too many evidence regarding, for example, retina, because the problem that we have is we have been working separate. Like for example, you are searching, you have found the best way to do your retina surgery. We as anesthesia have found the best way to create the best analgesia, how to reduce side effects, but work together, this is new. This is something we need to find a way to create the best for our patient. Thank you for your question, Dr. Abdullah. Any other question? Uh, you know, to my to my understanding, actually, a uh, fast tracking is uh, like you. We can we can hear the name. 
uh, it's like a uh, it's like a separate uh, completely separate track you know a, a patient who is presented in the clinic to the surgeon and probably that is the place where the decision uh, will be made that okay um, just label this patient or the file of the patient is a fast track so that is the point where it will start yes. and the fast track means then the protocol and the policy for the fast track will be entirely different from the admitted patients i don't think many retina patients can be fast track but still there are type of surgeries which can be made uh, as a fast track a fast track patient will do all the lab work the anesthesia examination the surgeon uh, clinic attend all these things and come in the morning from home and then somebody receive him on arrival and, and and he has been given a fixed time that okay you should arrive for example 10 o'clock once the patient arrived there is someone to receive there is a counter or there is a place where, where the patient is received he is directed to the or instead of going to the bed he just kept in a waiting area for, for a little time maybe 30 minutes 45 minutes there is a, a, by anesthesia there is a done a quick uh, reassessment before taking him in and as dr silva mentioned the type of anesthesia uh, that will be if it is a local uh, it is local but if it is a ga it will be a different ga because we have certain uh, special drugs available in anesthesia which which are short acting and the patient recovery is much faster and if not two hours, but I'm confident that we can send that patient home uh, in three hours. Sure, I, I am, I'm agreeing with you 100%. Even Dr. Sahur, you know, like at the beginning of the fast track surgical trials, they were very apprehensive regarding apply this implementations in children, in elderly people, in people with a lot of comorbid and now we know that if we create the right protocol, we can do it with any kind of surgery, with any type of anesthesia. The only thing is create the right um, measures for those patients. And the most important they said is we need to pick this patient, you know, like, okay, we will do, for example, Botox. We will do patient AS1 and 2, from one year to 12 year, they will do only inhalatory induction. We will give uh, topical drops. They will perform with the two eyes at the same time, one by resident, one by consultant. We will reduce the time to 15 to 10 minutes. In, in one morning, we can do 45 patients in nine hours of work. You know, but we, you, we need to find what, what we want, which goals we want to achieve. I think that's the most important step in the implementation of this because you cannot apply this to everyone. You cannot apply this to every surgeon, to every patient. No, no. You need to create, you know, like a cluster of patients. And now when you have it, you will do the fast track surgery on them. Yeah, but in, 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 ophthal in ophthalmic surgery, I think uh, uh, probably it is possible to most of our patients, not all, but uh, in other surgeries, maybe, you know, uh, but uh, for eye, uh, we are already doing, uh, you know, around 40 to 50% of our patients is a daycare. We can increase that. Even our SSU beds, first of all, I, I don't think every patient need to go and admit on a bed. That is, uh, for me, that is just a luxury. Uh, but uh, even if we use a bed, we can use one bed for two patients or for even three patients. Yes, yes. So, I, yeah. I'm agree with you because you know we, we are an eye hospital and we can do a lot of things to improve. The, the only thing I, I can find in, in, our, in our play is probably the pre-anesthesia evaluation. You know, we can improve this because we can separate patients. We can find how to pre-medicate. Now when we, for example, we know this patient is hypertensive we will go direct to that because as you know, for example, we have a lot of delay regarding uh, high blood pressure in our holding area. So if we apply a goal for treatment before they arrive, probably we can save a lot of time. So it's not difficult to start making solutions, but we need to find 
where we want to apply this solution. And I think like in two months, three months after repeat and practice, now we will do a great job with our available resources. I think, doctor, I have a, a our pediatric patients coming from Botox, can this be considered fast track? Yes, we are doing fast track inside the OR. But in the old perioperative process, for example, anesthesia is not involved. You know, like we saw the patient the day before, but we don't know how the surgeon pick these patients when he's going to do it. We just know that we have a Botox list probably like two, three days before. So we cannot act. If we have like, like a better team approach and we can work together with scheduling, with the surgeon and with anesthesia and nursing department, of course, we will have a better outcome. And the other thing is, why can't this be applied to FACO patients in SSU? No, it can be applied to FACO patients in SSU. But we need to, to find which patients, because not every FACO patient, it's, it's for this. If you are talking about 89, heart disease, and renal failure, this patient needs a different protocol. You cannot put it as, as a normal FACO surgery, because the FACO probably is the same, but the patient is not the same. So we will need more time for this patient than with other ones. So thank you for your question, Dr. Semide.